for any questions. So if you want to start firing off any questions, please feel free to do so. I'll take who's going to be first. Registration, uh, we registered. Now I've registered about three times on the computer. It says I'm registered, then I get another phone call saying you're not registered. So Went to try and populate a questionnaire last night. Yeah, wouldn't do it. Okay, so what site were you using? Are you on the bushfire? No, You've gone one, through the... The one that you sent me from the road call. Yep. I oh, know that was uh, that's the outcome of it anyway. I downloaded it and filled it out myself. So. so some people say I'm registered, others are saying I'm not registered. Yeah. So what we'll do with John being here, he'll take these cases individually. He'll make a note of your name and number and he will assure me that someone will contact you um, or he'll talk to you personally before you leave. What was your name? Robert Carney. Robert Carney. It's on the list. I know Peter Carney up at Magic Gonga. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just come down from there last night. Uh, by Corio. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm on the list, but the next person who reads me says. We're not. And we're working through on. the list to make sure, yeah. you know, I've got the number of registrations in this area, so we need to make sure you're on the list. So what don't you, leave today. No, what you've got here is a questionnaire. So what we do, uh, I'll just go for everyone. Who, who, who has been affected and registered for uh, the cleaner under the Grow Pond state government. So just so you are aware, uh, Grow Pond works to Paul's team um, on behalf of the state. So the state are paying for the cleanup. There's a particular scope for the cleanup. Uh, we don't do fences, uh, other people do those. We don't get rid of cattle. We don't uh, uh, sort out uh, problems with uh, uh, washaways, culverts and Etc. Etc. As I saw uh, coming out of Nariel last night, but, but I'll talk about certain things <laughs> a bit later. Uh, I'm just going to try and give an overview. But will anything to do with uh, a, a structure? So it's a hay shed, an old dairy where you've been storing stuff, or you're currently using it. Uh, your uh, concrete paving around your house, if it's, uh, the fire got onto that and it's exploded, uh, concrete slabs, you know, any buildings that you've got. Are eligible for the cleanup, for and the state will, will pay for that. Stock so, yards. Say again. Stock yards. Stock yards. Yes. Yep. Yes. So they'll be cleaned up. Yep. Okay, and taken away. Farm dumps. Say again. <laughs> Farm dumps. They're all rubbish heaps. You know. Is that a red herring? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> no, it's not a no, red herring. No, you're not going. No, you're not going to get the farm dumps uh, yeah. done. Oh, okay. Right. There's. That, that goes in another area of, 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 that I don't want to go into. Okay, <laughs> haven't got all day. EPA and all those sort of things. Not yeah. um, so speaking of EPA, EPA WorkSafe uh, Victoria. There's lots of regulations that when you get state and federal government money, and it's not just state money; it's federal government money. It comes with um, rules and it comes with uh, paperwork, and, and, and that's what we're dealing with behind the scenes. In order to get to all of the areas, okay, there's several uh, uh, affected areas, as you know. Um, so there are some rules and regulations that we're still sorting out with the state and the federal governments, which are slightly different to what we did in 2009. Now, 2009 was a big job. I was on that, and, uh, and I mentioned Majigonga. I was at Ma uh, Majigonga. If anyone knows where that is, it's the other side of uh, between Yak and Nanda and and Middleford, uh, very similar community to, to here, very similar country in many ways. Um, and we had certain rules and regulations to work to. So all the contractors who we got on board had to be um, accredited, they had to have their trucks checked by the EPA, signed off. WorkSafe had to also look at the procedures that they were using. So we've got that overlay on all of the things that we're doing. Um, this time, <coughs> plus a bit more. Asbestos. Okay. Say again? Asbestos. <coughs> yeah. covered. Speaking of asbestos, um, and what we did last time, and what we did in 2016 at, at Wye River, um, the uh, Victorian Building uh, Authority, together with uh, WorkSafe Victoria, deemed the waste is to be asbestos containing waste. So everything, whether it is asbestos within the QE of the, of the site or not, it gets treated as if it is asbestos containing. So it gets onto the, the trucks, double wrapped, and it gets taken off to particular cells in particular tips. From here I'm going to Warboss to look at a tip uh, site to establish there. 
then I go to Ben's Dale and tomorrow we can rid of a look at those. So we're looking at all of the uh, cells that we need to do for this region, uh, this part of East Gippsland. So lots of procedures and things that we have to put in place before we actually strike a blow. Back to the registrations. So the registrations, you register online or um, the, you, you make a call and people fill that registration out for you and then they will send you back a questionnaire. So what a gap, so what Robert has been sent is a questionnaire. So that's that's another level. So we just get a little bit more detail uh, about, about the property and about you. You fill that questionnaire out. Then that comes back and then it goes out to the team. And then the team, we've got community liaison officers, we've got project managers, we've got site managers, we've got contract administrators in each of the teams that we're setting up in each of the main centres. Buckham is going to be a main centre uh, because we've got to go all the way up to Willis from, from Buckham and Gallanby and W Tree and all the places where a lot of you are probably from or, or, or have neighbours. Um, so we uh, once we get these that return from it, that triggers another level. So then we'll get the consent form. We've got a consent form here. Then we'll come out to your property and then we'll fill out this consent form with you and then we'll go over the scope of works. So we'll sit in your in your kitchen table with you or, or on the back of you, out the front, if you haven't got a kitchen table, and, and we'll say, okay, that, that shed on the hill over there, that dairy we just looked at, all that sort of stuff. Okay, and so that's in the scope of work. Those trees that are dangerous for our, our team and you to operate if we wanna uh, get rid of that, they will go. But if there's trees on the property, we're not, None of our business, none of our scope of work. No fences, unless a fence or a gate is right in the middle of the, the burnt area that we're responsible to clean up. Okay? So it's, it's, it's quite clear, but sometimes it's a little bit grey. We'll do cars uh, and you know uh, other vehicles, tractors, etc., etc., that are burnt there. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Um, with the, the, the cleanup team, 
that's when we get the uh, growth and supervisor will come with the contractors. They'll contact you because they'll have all your details and they'll have uh, at least one contact with you, possibly two contacts with you by that time, and then they'll come in and mobilise, and then they'll start to do this meetup. Now, the cleanup uh, for some people, uh, well, the whole this whole situation is quite sensitive for some people, and, and different people get affected in different ways. If at any time you want to stop the cleanup on your house and go to a room where you know you had your favourite jewellery or coin collection or whatever, and you want to check it out, and you don't want anyone else around, we'll back off straight away. We'll send the bikes to early smoker, early lunch, and so as long as as long as you need, to a, the, the time that you need will be taken. We we'll don't say, oh, you've got half an hour, and it's your place. It's um, you know the sensitivities that are in the dark. Sorry. So I went through a couple of those at Majigonga, um, and others went through in, in other areas. So I just feel uh, very comfortable about doing that, uh, and uh, you know we'll, we'll uh, make sure the crews are, are very sensitive to all needs at all times. Um, so the clean up will get done, and then. You'll be there, or you're not there, depending on how big the property is and how how uh, sparse the uh, the sites are within the property. And then we'll come and check with you to say, um, is it clean up to your satisfaction? So that you can go back to your insurance company or or whomever you want to go back to and say, I'm ready to rebuild, or I'm just going to cover that with grass and build somewhere else, or whatever. You want to do. What's the time frame after the this procedure. This procedure is already working now for some of you in the room uh, because you're, you're, you're actually, you've entered that procedure. It can take two to four weeks um, as far as the total procedure. Um, as far as, uh, uh, are you also in that question asking when we're going to get here and start? Because yeah, well. I, I think that's, I think that's, a, that's a fair question. Um, we've got people in um, Sarsfield later today. Uh, and they'll be coming out to uh, Buckham probably tomorrow, and they'll start. With, uh, and if not tomorrow, it'll be could even be as early as Sunday. Uh, if not, definitely Monday. We'll be coming here, and for those people who are at the stage of having their consent forms signed, we'll make arrangements with them, appointments with them, say Monday, if, if I say it's not over the weekend, and then come and start contact. So then that process will be in train. And for some people that will be a week, for some people it might be two weeks. <coughs> and from a priority point of view, it's not if you live up in Willis or Sagan Bogan, you're at the end of the line. It's if you've got a dangerous structure as deemed by the uh, building surveyor of the Shire. If the building surveyor uh, of the Shire deems something as a dangerous structure and he doesn't organise for contractors to do that, uh, and he would have already signed, posted that, and given you notices uh, on those things, um, then we will do that as a priority. The other priorities are businesses and schools and community halls. They are priorities uh, over residences, okay? So that's just the way it is. Um, and, and, and we're not necessarily saying, uh, oh, there will be sort of an order of who gets their registrations in earlier and and then get grouped. Uh, but it's not necessarily saying, oh, we're going to start Buck and, and then we're going to work our way up to the New South Wales uh, Victorian border. There'll be people coming in, in lots of areas concurrently <coughs> once we get going. So no one's going to get any particular priority over it. In, in. So, hello. Now, while we were talking, I thought I had two things, but now I'm up to four. Okay. Um, first of all... I thought it would go down. <laughs> 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 um, tomorrow, I don't think you'll get too much sense out of anybody because the bucking races are on. Oh, that's an out for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, the, yeah, I heard. I heard my partner said, uh, "Be careful, John. I think there's something going on in bucking." Yeah, there'll be there'll be traffic everywhere. We think. Yeah. We have to know. So right. just be aware of that. Okay. Um, so that's first. That's thing. fair enough. Thanks. Um, second thing is, um, is there any facility? To put a like a skip bin at a place that 
if someone wanted to put um, glass and all that sort of thing in there um, as they're working through, going through their house or whatever to try to um, just get rid of some of the stuff before you, you know, got rid so of it. Yeah, we, we get this in every region mm -hmm. um, and from a, from a state perspective we're trying to discourage that because it encourages people to wade through asbestos and we're yeah. trying to stop that so that we're trying to just say to everyone, please just hold until Brocon get there. Mm. Um, you know, because we, we don't want people getting into places that they shouldn't be in. And, and so if we put a skip in there, we, we know that means that, that you'll get into the house and get into the rubbish and get into things. Collapse roofs and all that. Yeah, yeah, so it's a safety thing. We're trying to avoid it if possible. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but failing that, I, I wouldn't mind the skip thing because I know there's no asbestos there, but there's some places where there's glass and cracks and I don't want you to dig up all the dirt and take it away, but I'm quite happy to, to deal with the glass and stuff. So will there be a skip bend? I don't believe so at this stage, because that Grocom will treat it as a site, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a site covered under WorkSafe and, and, you know, that site will get cleaned up. If that means some of the dirt is taken, again, that's a negotiation on the day between you and yeah. Grocom, a very individual process. Yeah. With regard to skip bin or whether it's a truck, uh, I don't think anything's going to go in the skip bin because well, as Paul's reinforced as well, the procedures we have to operate under WorkSafe Victoria uh, uh, and the EPA are that everything has to be wrapped up and get into that uh, truck and taken to that particular cell at that particular tip. Okay. Even if there's no asbestos in Even, that's what I said, that everything has to be everything treated, treated as, as asbestos as containing as okay. material. It's why it gets very complex for us. Sorry start. about that, but we've got to just it, it, when you've got these sorts of things and lots of people's needs and up and down over the hills and whatever in different regions, you just got to say we just got to have a particular standard and consistent because the contractor that's here may go over the hill to Corion after he's finished the clean up here or right vice versa. You know, so we just got to have a consistent uh, process right through. Yeah. So that was number two. Yep. Uh, number three. Um, <coughs> dangerous trees. Now, on the um, track to get into the house site that we now cleaned up, um, there's two very dangerous trees. One has snapped off about um, four metres up in the air, and right. it's, it's still the trunk's still on the trunk, yeah. but it's now hanging across into another tree. Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to put a truck or anything underneath that. Yeah, sounds, um, sounds like it's fairly squarely in the category that yep. it has to be dealt with. Yeah, and then there's another tree that's been burnt out up the middle and it's got four things in it and it's a huge big tree yeah. that once again overhangs the track. If it creates risk for Brocon to access the site, then that is in Brocon's scope to remove that tree. Right. Because we cannot have an unsafe environment for all the contractors coming in and out. Yeah. And so Brocon have got that loud and clear. If it's a tree down in your back paddock, no, no, that's not Brocon's scope, but no. if it's if it creates issues for access and safety for the workers, absolutely we would tell Brocon you need to get rid of those trees. Right. Um, third thing, I know you said you're not dealing with fences, it's probably more in your yep. pool, pool, isn't it? Pool, yep. pool yeah. Um, fencing wire. Now, people have got mounds of this around yep. the place now and um, there seems to be no one telling us where it's going so to be. So what we're doing right now, um, uh, some of the estimates we're working on are quite staggering for how much wire there is. Uh, mm -hmm. I've heard figures anywhere up to 26,000 kilometres of burnt fencing wire. Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, that's quite a big ball of wire that we're trying to deal with. What we're trying to work through with councils at the moment, and council have done very well here, is establish um, town stockpiles, for want of a better re uh, word. So somewhere here in Buchan, there'll be a community site identified where you could bring your wire to, and then at a later stage that'll get taken because there's a lot of recyclers who are coming on board who are happy to sort of crush it down and take it. If you cannot get the wire to the site then we're encouraging everyone to get that wire as close to your road or your driveway or your you know whatever it is so that council can work over the, and this will be a months months of work, council will work with you over the coming months to get that picked up and get it taken to these sites so that we can dispose of it. Okay, I've taken up too much time, I'll shut up. No, no, they're no, yeah. all good questions. Do you know where that site is in Buckingham? I don't know, so Susie, do you know, the local do you know who, to, who to ask? 
I would suggest Susie, the local yeah, council I'm member, would. It's up at the mill. Yeah, yeah, that's at the mill, over the town mill beside it. There's yeah. a little mill site. Okay. I, I, I think that, that's the thing. I've got two trailer loads of wire yesterday. Yep. Squared, squared them all out. Took them up to the top mill. Seen the big pile of wire up there, so I dumped it there without asking anyone because I didn't know. Yep. There's no one go to person where you've got a problem. It's easier just to get in and do it. Now, you don't want that. I've got. Six people, different groups, come into the neighbours. Um, Mark Herbal, Herbal's property, Peter Lye, Mark, Mark's down there. And I went down there, four of them didn't make a phone call to come and assess the place. They didn't contact the owner, they just, yep. they just turned up. Two were with Mark Herbal. While I was down there with one group of people and Mark turned up, one bloke come up from the next door neighbours and said, I can't get into the neighbour's property because he's got it locked. He said, that's because he's not there. He doesn't live there because his house is burnt down. And he says, I need to go in there and put cages all around his house for safety. He said, well, um, we'll give him a ring. So he rung him up and he had to wait an hour and a half for that fellow to come up from Bensdale. No one's ringing anyone before they come in and do this. I've got a goat dead at Mark Herbal's property that I've got to go and grab. I've grabbed other animals off properties and took them to a burn pile. This is, this is a hazard, they're all going to have maggots, they're all going to affect stock, so I just go and fit it, put it in a garnet bag and take it, and I've got to do that today, and put it in a garnet pile. I've cleared it with Mark Herbal. To ask anyone to do anything, I've got a very big dangerous tree on a fence line. I've got two possible people looking to clean up the fence line, as um, the people at home with are looking to come through. How can they work there if there's a dangerous tree? That has to be cut down. Just, you know, sometimes it's easier just to get in and do it. I'm looking at falling, falling that tree. I've got a dozer turned up on Sunday, and I'm looking at blade and a whole whole fence line. Yep. Now, is that is that illegal? What's what's, no, what's look? What I would say to you right now is that we absolutely understand that people are just getting on with life. Right? They can't wait for the government to turn up and get rid of every tree or every because it's just too much. Some properties are, you know, their insurance companies are ahead of us, and they're not waiting for growth on, and they're just getting in and cleaning up. So this might be some of these people that are just turning up that we're not tracking. We, we don't. You know, there's so many people, I agree with you, mate, there's so many people doing it. But if you've got a dangerous tree on your property and you have the means to safely get rid of that tree right now, absolutely, mate, I would encourage you to do that. Well, I've got a shed full of stuff at the bottom of my next door neighbour's property and all the tools and everything are burnt and there's a big heap of rubbish there and I'm just going to take it all to the tip. Now, I don't, you're supposed to consult people before you do it. And see, the tips will probably turn you away. That's right. There's, um, there's, no, is, there's no, my whole point of it all, the conversation, there's no one go to person stuck no. it, put in the town and say, this is the person you need to see, this is the person you need to see, because it's too hard <coughs> to source all this information. We've got, I've got stock running around the road, yeah. now I've got two horses to look after and put in and make sure they're not on the road, and two alpacas because we've got the fence down and ready to put in a fence. Now we've got, we've got free range stock up there, and we've got to just get in and do it. It's got to, it's got to be done. There's two doing forms and chasing people and who to go to and who, who you consult. It's just very hard. No, I, I absolutely understand. And we, you know, we're working very hard to try and get it and it's not what you want to hear, but one of the one of the ways we're trying to corral all this is with your community recovery hub yep. that BRV is trying to establish, but that's a couple of weeks away, right, before we get that one-stop shop for you to come to. So, again, what I'd say is if you have to do something now, you know, and it's safe to do so, please, please have a crack and, and get it done. But... If you can wait, and I know a lot of it can't, I don't know a lot of it can't wait, but if you can wait, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good work to try and get up and running. Yeah. But it, I accept, mate, it's, it's a bit chaotic at the moment. People like the organisations that come through, um, you know, Blaze Aid, um, uh, the, the other, sorry, Rubicon. Uh, Rubicon, we don't control those organisations. They're doing a fantastic job, but they're all out as well doing things. So, you know, there's a lot of places that teams at the state don't control. Mm. Rubicon playing fence lines. They're, gonna come, they're coming up to help me today. Yep. But they stand on your fence line, put a hand out, and they just clean that strip. If there's any dangerous trees or anything, it's not their business. They just clean it so that the fence and blaze they can put a fence through. Yep. Now, that, that's not really clean the fence line. It's, it's a help. I'm not going to knock back their help. Yeah. It's all good. But you still ask these people, like blaze they, do you help out with fencing? Because Somebody says at a meeting they've got a million dollars, and then they just got another million of dollars, got two million dollars supplied for them to put in for the farmers that are struggling for fencing. Yep. You ask them, I don't know, I have to ask my superior. I don't know. It's, every question is, I don't know. If you had one go to person that linked with all the agencies, yep. that's, that's a specialist in that field to link to the agencies as a go between for all the people to save them drama, because yep. they're out there struggling and doing it hard. I'm living out of a buddy. 
I'm living out of the van. No, I was doing that before. One of my reasons is the dozer's coming in. I had the dozer booked before. Yep. He's coming in to blade a spot so I can put my house over here and live in it. So it's pretty hard for a lot of people that haven't got houses to find places to live. They're just struggling from day to day to live, let alone go and get things done. So one go-to person, I, I feel, is an answer to a lot of problems where yep. when I've asked questions and you keep asking them, I've filled out forms too and I've keep, kept fill, filling them out. Yep. But you go to that one go-to person, they have a file on you and they can um, send the appropriate people to you, it would make it a lot easier. So we do have a system up and running right now and, uh, you can get a case manager under the 1800 number, I don't know if you've done that, but if you ring the, the Bushfire Recovery 1800 number, you can be assigned an individual case manager. So when you ring that number, you say, I would like a case manager, please. And that gives you a personal contact who can step you through some of these things. Now that's a remote contact, right? It's not someone here that's gonna help you on the ground, but these case managers are, sta are standing up very quickly right now to actually assess your individual needs and work with you over each coming week so that you can ring that same person, they can come out to you and talk to you, they can help you navigate through this stuff while we try and get the community to tell us where you want the hub established so we can create that one-stop shop for you. All right, so we're working pretty hard to get these one-stop shops up and running, which is why this community recovery committee that apparently you all sort of voted on last night or got the nominations done last night, that's key for me to help you. All right, because I can't just roll in here from Melbourne and set up a one-stop shop unless you tell me what you want. And that's why I need the community to feed this back through Susie at council. Hey, here's the, here's the plan for bucking. Um, you know, and boom, I'll start signing checks and hiring buildings and hiring people and getting people in here, but I need the community to feed that to me so that we can help you. All right, because at the moment, mate, there's still a couple of weeks where we're all just in this uh, grey zone where there isn't one stop shop for you at the moment but I would encourage you please ring that 1800 number get a case manager <coughs> for your individual circumstances <coughs> because they might know grants and assistance and legal aid that you're not you don't know about that they can say hey if you applied for this we can get you this help as well we can get you that we can connect you with you know a couple of local people that can come and clean up some trees so try really uh, please use that 1800 number as much as you can Sorry I don't have answers for you mate, but I, I hear you loud and clear, okay, we're, we're I think, trying. I think Raycon might inform for me to clean up the shed. If the tip's not going to take it, they'll uh, be able to help me out with the clean up. Yeah? Absolutely mate. All if right. it's a fire affected structure, it Raycon is. will take it. Yep. So you need to register. What was your name? Wade Hully, but it's for Jack and Alan Rag. Vicky owns the property, her daughter, but it's the bottom shed just as the fire come up the hill. I'm sorry, mate, yep. I'm not going to remember all that. That's all no, right. But I need you to fill out a registration form. My Robert's done, yep. and he's gone to this next step. I'll take that to my neighbours because yeah. I'm helping my neighbour do the work. Okay, yeah. yeah. But and this is a challenge for us at state level too. We get lots of people on different properties registering other properties, and not for a second suggesting there's anything going on. But we've got to make sure that that property wants that structure removed, or you know what I mean? Because it's happening a lot. It's got to be done by the owner, and it's got to be done I, by I the owner. I understand that she's busy in Melbourne as a nurse. I can make a phone call, and you can talk to a direct, and then Jack can sign off the paperwork because it's his, it's her father living in. And the all property. she needs to do is ring the 800 number, mate. Get that registration she's done, and we've we've we're finished. It's not happening. I'm doing all the fences for. Her. I'm doing all the work for nothing. Yeah, she could she couldn't give a shit. Two old blokes, 80 years old, and I'm helping them out. Yep. You know, I'm trying to do what I can, and this is paperwork that I come up against. I'd rather just get in and do it. I would have taken that to the tip, but now I need, they won't accept it, so I've got yeah, to find another way of dealing with it. Yeah, but the quickest way you can do it is to actually register, and I know it's painful. Uh, personally, I don't like it because it consumes that everyone's on the uh, internet and all the rest of it, but we can go through things over the phone with some people uh, in that situation. Yeah, well, I can the key the thing phone. is to register. Yeah. Because that's your, if you don't register, we can still be talking here tonight till midnight. Well, well I, can help you, I can help you after this meeting. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, the, like, the assumption is that um, everyone's got a computer that they can sit there at, but we've lost how many homes in this area yep. where computers and all this electronics connection connectivity went, yep. went by the phone. And again, the 1800 number, they can do the registration for you over the phone. So, so long as you've got a phone, you can get on to the 1800 number and you can do that over the phone. So, your you case manager will help you out with and that. And the case manager, they I do encourage follow up you. Every week, they give you a phone. Get yourself yeah. a case manager. Can I just say about case managers? Um, I think I got a phone call two, three weeks ago. Did I want a case manager? I said yes. I still don't know where my case manager is. Have you rang them back again? 
Well, no, harass them. Get onto that 1 800 number and say it's not good enough. You rang me two weeks ago. Where's my return phone call? Well, I'm just sort of trying to take some of the frustration. And I understand that I've heard it a lot. Yeah. We're working really hard to try and fix it. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, mate. How do people know to ring this 1 800 number? How do you know to ring it? Um, so again, look, it's been on posters and flyers, and I mean, I understand a lot of people haven't got computers or internet or phones, or um, so we're trying to put it in newspapers, and you know, we're trying to get that bushfire recovery number out everywhere we can. Sorry, sorry, negative about this. No, please don't be sorry. But I tried to ring an 800 number the other day because they told me that they hadn't been able to get in touch with me. I had a letter in the mail saying they haven't been able to get in touch with me during the fires. So I ring back his number four times and he just rang out to it stop ringing. Okay. So I'm just sort of trying to tell you some of the frustrations that... No, no, I, I hear it, I hear it. And we're feeding it back. I've got... Uh, Vince is writing notes furiously here. <laughs> we're, uh, so, know. look, I'm not trying to be negative, but... No, I'm no, please, we need to hear it. We need to understand what's going on. Happening. Well, yep. I've, I've done the same too. I've re returned calls because I've been working on chainsaws and fence lines. I leave my phone so I don't get broken. When I get back, they say, ring this number. I ring it. I've done four, four or six times, and then I've just forgot about it. Yep. And that's happened to me too. We understand, mate. we understand, we're working it, we're working it, and we'll continue to push it there. Broke on and our own 1-800 number uh, to get back to people. Oh, um, last, at the end of last week, Brocon, a representative from Brocon, rang me and she said that on Monday, this Monday gone, someone was coming out to our property to assess the damage. Um, and they would contact us prior to the visit, but we never heard from them. Uh, they were going to turn up last yes. Monday, yes. the Monday in this week? Yeah. The Monday in this week. Rather than next Monday? Yeah, no, this week. The one that's gone, that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, I apologise for that. Uh, I'll find out. So, can we talk after this? Yeah, and I know some people have also got a reference number. Well, we haven't got one at all. I don't know. So, once you register, you, get a, you do get an ID number? Well, I do. You do get an ID number. That was great. him leave this building until <laughs> you've written down your individual I, I actually yeah, details. I actually have got some people uh, behind you who are actually writing down notes, <laughs> like, like Paul and stuff. Uh, I think um, I could make a comment. I think generally in this community, people have been frustrated with the registration process because people think they've registered but don't actually have a number. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it probably applies to a lot of Thank people you. here. So there yeah. might be we'll a try and tie it up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a list of everyone who's registered? Yes. The list, we don't have the list here, but they're back in Melbourne, all the registration lists. Any questions from this side? Yeah, yeah, just related to all this, because there's two issues. There's, there's, there's the issue between the government and registering with the government, which I did, and I got the response back with an email saying I had registered. Yep. A week later, I rang Grocon and, and their eyes went around in their head. They didn't know who I was. I re-registered, um, and again, I got a, a response back saying that I had registered. Um, and I then a week later got a phone call from Grocon um, saying, asked me a whole lot of questions and said to me that they'll send me an email for me to fill out the form of income. So, so if I can just explain why some of the confusion has been uh, uh, occurred. So right at the start, when it all first happened and it was announced, the government had the 1800 number for registration for Grocon. This, this, is all, this is all online. Yep, so we've subsequently handed that over to Grocon now that we're in contract with Grocon, like a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, don't quote me on how long it was. So there's, that's why some of that turbulence has happened. What I would say to all of you is no one will miss out, okay? No one is not going to get their block cleaned up. We will get to all of you, I promise. We will get to all of you. There might be some frustrations, and I, I, I hear it loud and clear, in the meantime, as we switch from one system to another, and as Grocon stand up this, what you can imagine is a very large project team, 
and we're trying to stand up a bushfire recovery Victoria new department in the middle of the sort of crisis that everyone's feeling. So I know it's not what you want to hear, but there's another couple of weeks still of this sort of turmoil. But I promise you, no one will miss out. If your property has been fire affected, Procon will clean it up. If your building, your house, your stockyard, your Grocon will come and clean it up, okay? If you feel like you've not registered or you register again, you know what I mean? We'll take three or four and Grocon probably don't want me to say that, but just keep hammering them no, no, until no, you're agree, confident agree, yeah. that you've, you've no got one. into the system. I think the key thing that Paul's saying there, no one's going to miss out no one. and, they, and it leaves a bit of a uh, temporary term off and teething stuff and it's gone on for longer than you'd like and but it's going to continue for a little bit longer. I did have a visit from council with a, what I thought was a, there were three of them. There was a council man um, and a bloke who was a builder of some description. And I had assumed by the way he spoke that they were acting on behalf of the council as liaison to Grocon, but apparently not at all. So what you've got for council at the moment, I think they're almost finished, correct me if I'm wrong, Susie, in this area, is what we call the secondary impact assessments. So that is council absolutely verifying that yes, this house has been destroyed, this house belongs to John Smith, this house is, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that the government has an official database of, because the first round impact assessments that went around, as you can imagine, with the army and everyone else was a bit, uh, you know, uh, straight after the fire. So things were missed, houses were missed, properties were missed. This secondary impact is probably what happened at your house. It's two or three people, they go, property to property and verify, you know, GPS coordinates, um, lock it into the database that yes, we, we register that house, it's been destroyed, um, and then that we use that, we can feed that into Grocon, when we overlay the Grocon, give us the final map of right, here's Buckingham, the surrounds, here's the 11 houses we're removing, here's the 27 uh, fences, uh, not fences, uh, you know, burnt buildings and sheds. And then we can have a look at the secondary impact assessment and say, well, hang on, we've, we've actually seen that there's 30. Maybe there's a couple of people out there that haven't registered because they're older people who live in Melbourne, that their neighbours helping them out. So, And that's where we'll come so, back yeah. and we'll try and chase those ones and twos down because there are still people that haven't registered for the cleanup, and, and there are people who will not register. Okay, so we do, last time, last couple of times, we checked the, the cross-check with the council database that they threw their rates system. Uh, ownership and uh, affected people. Um, some people don't want help. Some people have already sorted it out themselves with the insurance company or whatever. Uh, be aware though, um, a lot of the insurance companies uh, are encouraging you to avail yourselves of the bushfire cleanup program because you know, it gets it out of their way and then they've got a clean site to operate with after that because some people's policies, the cleanup and dem demolition and cleanup is not actually covered. So it's really good to look at your insurance policy, talk to your insurance people and your other advisors uh, as, you're, as you're doing these things. But it, as you know, Grocon, uh, on behalf of the state uh, and the people of Victoria, have got a very defined scope. We'll do what fits into that box and no, no more. But, so if you're, you're talking to insurance companies or you've got insurance, insurance, I encourage you to talk to them. Uh, to, to see where, where your sort of rights are, uh, I suppose. So there's no lowering of uh, the payout from an insurance company because you're... That's something job. I'm not going to answer because I don't know. And that's so an insurance I've question. this up quite a few times. Yeah, so look, I, I liaise with the Insurance Council of Australia. That's another one yeah. of my uh, awesome jobs. Uh, so what you have is, what I would encourage everyone here, please, when you deal with your insurance agency, if you can, do it in writing. If you can. If you can't and you have to make a phone call, please have a notebook with you and write down who you spoke to, what they said, so that you have a record because in three to six months from now, if you have a dispute with your insurance agency and you've got no record of those phone calls you've made, you know, we can't really help you. If you've got records of who you spoke to, what was said, what was promised by someone, you know, we've got much more ability then to help you through the potential hub in Buchan where we might have a legal aid person come in twice a week who could give you advice on insurance disputes. Um, if that's required, you know, we can help you through it. But if you don't keep notes and or have it in email if you can or a record, you know, that's a real challenge going so I'd encourage you to please take notes of all that stuff because uh, the Insurance Council of Australia are assuring us that the insurance uh, agencies are acting fair and, you know, fair income. 
Well, we want to hold them to that and we want to make sure they're doing that. But I can't help you if you don't give me notes yeah. and, a, and a bit of evidence, you know, on what's happening. So that's what I'd say to that. Yeah. Just on that note, I've heard of a case where someone had clean up insurance, um, but the insurance company saying, no, we're not paying that out because the government is going to clean up for it. And I think you'll find that uh, on the public record, insurance companies are saying that's not the case. So again, I'd encourage that person, whoever it is, they need to put that in writing back to their insurance agency and say, I understand, in accordance with your, you know, the public announcements that have been made, that that is not the case. Please explain why you're doing that. You know, so again, these are individual issues, but you know, in writing, so you've got a record, because then we can help chase it up later. Um, is there another thing related, uh, and Paul might, I'm pretty sure he's going to help me out for this, and I haven't uh, run past him yet. Um, in some areas, the scrap metal merchants are getting in really early, and they're going to, particularly farmers, and so we'll clean up all that that collapsed shit and all the steel, and get rid of it for you. So they do that, and they just run. Okay, So they get all the money for that scrap metal, because that's the, the business is, the business people. Farmer gets nothing. Uh, he gets a clean site, but he doesn't get, um, you know, things removed <coughs> appropriately according to what <coughs> level of regulation that we're working under. Um, what we do uh, is actually collect all the metal. All the metal gets recycled, and it goes back to a fund within the bushfire recovery organisation, and that money comes back to that community because we have to account for every bit of tonnage in every area, every shire, every town. So uh, if you weren't affected by, or if you know about what happened in 2009 uh, fires, um, a lot of community halls got extended, a lot of uh, um, other public buildings and public facilities and grants were made available through the Bushfire Recovery Fund, on, if it's not that correct title, if you know what I'm talking about, the, the, the VIBA organisation. And that went on for 10 years until the end of last year. Um, money was still being dispersed and it was as a result of uh, uh, scrap metal and other contributing um, uh, lumps of money. So that's some, something to think about if you're thinking about uh, this community. Any other questions? I don't, don't want to hold anyone up any longer than necessary. Please, uh, we'll stay around. Sorry. Oh, sorry, septic tanks, I said I'd come back to that. Thanks, Robert. Um, we're still working that through because, the, again, the regulations have changed. Councils have got particular uh, requirements in, different, in, in the different regions. Uh, so what your requirements are here, or what we are allowed to do here, may be different to what's being allowed in the Alpine Shire, for instance. So that's something we're wising with the uh, shires on. So our right. position right now is if it is bushfire affected, right, that's the key. Is it well, bushfire affected? So, what yeah. you affected if it's so this is the there. assessment that Grocon need to make, but if it is bushfire affected, then we would expect Grocon will remove, cap, empty, fix, dig up that septic tank. So again, it's a very, I don't want to give you a specific answer because we don't know your particular site, and at this stage... The tanks are not under the house or yep. the warehouses anyway, so... But if there's important. any bushfire effect on that tank, then that absolutely that needs to be removed, or replaced, or remediated, or, or whatever it is. So imagine you've got an old concrete one, yeah. some people have got new plastic ones that get burned. Oh, yeah. Um, there's yeah. an yeah. underground, so there's, there's differences there, but we're still going to uh, get a definitive um, decision on a process that may involve sure the local that. building surveyor, uh, all the building uh, building surveys that do well, if you're uh, driving around with a machine, you're liable to go through it anyway. Sorry, uh, if you're driving around with a machine, you're liable to go through it anyway. Well, if you tell us where it is, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> we won't, we won't tell you. But that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, water tank, same. No, water tank's part of the, st the structure. Yeah. 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 No, the assessor said it's bugged, so. Yeah, they'll go, mate. Yeah. They'll all go. Yeah. You'll be left with a greenfield site. Yes. Plank, yeah. level, level. They'll take the, I'm not sure they'll do much levelling, but um, you want some landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, someone talked about uh, removal of uh, soil. We do have to remove the soil a little bit below where the the fire affected the site. So you're talking about glass, I think. Uh, yeah. And, and so we're not just going to 
you, no one's going to go and pick up glass, so be a, they'll do a farm scrape with like a bobcat with a four in one bucket, you'll reverse back and pick it up. So just be aware of that. We actually have to do that as part of the processes. Yeah, I've, look, I've also got a shipping container which is filled with burnt, burnt stuff, furniture and stuff. Would you like, and I'm just assuming the shipping container wasn't taken away, so it's still is a shipping container, looks a bit ugly. But in terms of, will, you, will your blokes empty out the shipping container? I'll check that. It'll, it might be a negotiation that gets done with the, uh, the contractor and the site supervisor yeah. on, on, uh, on the site when you get there. But if you're using that shipping container as, as a, a, like a shed, well, like will be a, a yeah, lot of people do, sort of, yeah. uh, it's probably going to be past it. So we'll, we'll get just a confirmation from that on the, the, the map you go to the building surveys yeah. for, for the Shire on that. And just to give you a, a face to the name, so when you have it, if not suggesting you would, but if you had a dispute with Brocon and you said, no, no, that's burnt, that should go, and Brocon says, no, it's not, that comes to me. And I then say, no, sorry, mate, that's not within Brocon's scope. Please it do burnt. it yourself. Yeah, or, no dispute, it is burnt. Yeah, or I say, Brocon, <coughs> get on with it, mate. Clean that stuff up. Yeah. So, you know, you've, you've got a level of escalation, too, that yeah. you can use if you're not happy with the answer from Brocon. Um, so there's there's always different levels, but you know um, these guys and girls are pretty good. We think they'll work with you pretty reasonably, but there will always be disputes in regions, and that's okay. That'll get to me, and I'll, I'll come and um, uh, when I'll get one of my team to come and assess it on the ground and go, yep, we'll get rid of that for you, or no, sorry mate, over you. You got to do it yourself. But, you know, that's that's my decision to make, so we can help give you a level of assurance. There's there's an arbitrator. You know, what about major big tree cleanup along the side of the road, along your property, which is going to be a fire hazard corridor yeah, um, so in the future? Who, yeah, who so cleans that up? So right now, uh, Delp and Vic Forests are working on a plan which hopefully should be uh, uh, finalised, I would say, for want of a better term, in the next few days. Um, and there will be areas of responsibility allocated to agencies to come and clean it up. Because absolutely we're tracking. You can't just push it to the side of the road and leave it because we're just creating a problem for future down the track. So there's a lot of work going on right now. There's a lot of that cleanup work happening, but who's going to do this particular area? That that's yet to be worked through. But it's it's coming. People are working on. So it. it's their job to clean up the windrows that they've created and pushed on the side of the road. Yep. We don't expect the community to have to chainsaw the side of their roads for the timber that was felled for dangerous trees. That's that's not what we expect. So there are lots of people working through this right now at, at, back in Melbourne to try and sort it out and regional. Um, when they're doing that, is there any provision for them to uh, be aware that uh, property owners need to know where their property boundaries are, but they don't just clear everything out and then no one knows where to put the fences back up again? I would expect so. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of speaking out of my lane here, I'm not sure. Um, I would expect that our contractors won't just roll through and, and sort of clean the place out. Um, without an understanding of where boundaries are and whether it's a state boundary, forest boundary, your boundary, public private boundary. Um, but that, that detail obviously needs to be worked through and my, my colleague is scribbling that down. Yeah, because uh, it's quite important yeah. that you don't lose those uh, marker points. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to take the bits of those back in I've got a, a roadside that my granddad put through and it's from, from here to you to the edge of the road in one spot. Now, I don't know if that's a surveyed boundary line. If I put the fence straight through, um, I've just put a, a fence that's going to last 50 years plus. Who do I talk to about surveying the line to get it in the right spot? Um, I'd be going to local council. That's an absolute yep. local council yep. responsibility, I would suggest, to make sure that you've, you've got that squared away and you put it in the right spot. And get that done first, all right? Yeah. Anything else? We'll hang around, please. Um, if you need to talk to us individually, please do so. Thank you very much for coming this morning. I know you're sick of meetings and you just want to see things happening, so we're trying to get the things happening for you. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.